Greetings to you as you're joining in. Share this broadcast. Invite your followers. Say, Lord, I received the prophet's reward. I'm in Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 in verse 14. Solomon is telling a parable. Let's go to verse 14. I'm in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 14. Look what he says here. He says, there was a little city and there were a few men within that city. Then he says something profound here. He says, and there came a great king against that little city. And when that great king came against that little city, he besieged it and built great bulwarks, bulwarks against it. In verse 15, this is also profound. Look what it says here. Now there was found in it a poor, wise man. Now there was found in the city, verse 15, a poor, wise man. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Now this is amazing because now we see Solomon operating in the Jesus anointing. Solomon is telling a parable here. He says that there's a little city, a great king came, besieged the city, built great bulwarks against it. And then in verse 15, and 15 is the number of deliverance, here comes this poor man. The Bible calls him a poor wise man. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city in verse 15, which is the number of deliverance. Yet no man remembered that poor man. Now, saints, I want to show something to you in this text as we read it that, you, that you'll never see. I want to take you somewhere that's real profound. If you notice, the word of God declares that this is a poor, wise man. And so this man has wisdom, but he's poor, meaning that he's lacking. So what's really going on here? How could you have wisdom and lack? Because all throughout the Bible, it talks about wisdom causing you to increase, to be wealthy, to flourish, to have prosperity, to have good success. I want you to see this. This man has wisdom. He has the knowledge of God in certain areas, but there are certain areas of the knowledge of God that he has either yet received or either yet even heard of. I want you to see this because this happens to a lot of people when they get born again. They become poor wise men because they're wise in the fact that they know that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus came to die for them. They have received the death of Jesus, that he is the savior from sin, and that he gives eternal life, that he is God, he is Lord. But then they lack certain other knowledges that go alongside of the wisdom. Saints, look at the text here. I, I, was, I was studying this text for a couple minutes. And it says, now there was found in that city, a poor wise man. So this man is wise. That means that he has the knowledge of God in certain areas, but there are certain blind spots that he does not either know of or he has not received as truth. Because remember, tradition make the word of God none effect. It says, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. And so watch this here. He's operating in a, in a realm of salvation because that's what salvation is, deliverance. He's operating in a realm of salvation because salvation is deliverance. So he could not have delivered that city if he did not have a salvation anointing on him. So he has salvation on him, but yet he's a poor, wise man. There's certain areas that he's still lacking. There's certain sides of God that he has not tasted of yet. 
He has salvation, but there's other dimensions that he's lacking. Saints, the word poor, it means that you are deprived of something. That means that there's something in your inheritance that you have not yet received. To be poor means that there is something that belongs to you that is in the ownership of another. Being poor means that there's something that God has predestined to be in your, your hands, but yet it, is, it has yet arrived. So saints, you notice what King Jesus did. He came talking about preaching the gospel to the poor. Preaching the gospel to the poor. And so what King Jesus is saying, I'm going to take good news and give it to people that are lacking certain sides of me. Hallelujah. I'm going to take mysteries of myself and what I have and what I can do. And I'm going to reveal it to you so that you can know which sides of me have that you have not tasted, encountered, experienced, possessed. Are you seeing? So the whole purpose of King Jesus coming to preach the gospel is because there were certain characteristics that he had that people either did not receive or they didn't even have knowledge of. Because remember, out of King Jesus' mouth came those words. It's the traditions of men that make the word of God none effect. It was King Jesus that said that. There was no other preacher that said that, no other prophet. It was King Jesus. So King Jesus knew that it was a spirit of tradition that was stopping certain sides of him from reaching the people that were destined for salvation. There were certain sides of him that was blind spots. See, tradition... It, it never lets you taste the fullness of God. It'll willfully offend you about certain aspects so that you'll never become a master of it, the head and not the tail, so that you won't be the lender and not the borrower. And so tradition, the spirit of tradition, its job is to keep the weapons of your warfare concealed. Wow. And so the spirit of tradition will bombard any area where the light of the gospel is being revealed to you. So say God has a method for you to hear the gospel. That method will come on a neat target by the spirit of tradition. Because the spirit of tradition, its job is to keep right information from entering your soul so that your mind will be renewed and you'll be able to receive the prosperity that God has for you. So the spirit of tradition, its job is to get you to become offended at whatever method God is using to reveal himself to you. Wow. Remember in the Gospels, in the book of Acts, Apostle Paul is, is trying to preach the gospel to this prominent leader. And, and there, there, there's, a, there's a, a sorcerer. I think his name was Bar Jesus. And he stood in the way of Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul confronts him and tells him, you son of wickedness, you son of the devil, because you have done this, you shall be blind for a time. The Bible said that he became blind. What was going on with this man? This man had the spirit of tradition along with this sorcery. His job was to keep apostles word from ever getting to this man. Wow. Wow. His job was to keep Apostle Paul's revelations, Apostle Paul's mysteries, Apostle Paul's graces, 
Apostle Paul's anointings, Apostle Paul's angels, Apostle Paul's status in the spirit, Apostle Paul's uh, wisdom, his revelation. It, it, this man was sent there to stop him. So I want you to understand that even in the spirit realm, that's the agenda on everyone that has a great future in Jesus. You got a great future in the anointing. There is a by Jesus. There is a sorcerer that is a sign to stop the word from ever getting to you. See, see, listen, the reason why you don't like Prophet Joshua Holmes is not because Prophet Joshua Holmes care. <laughs> I just had to add that in there. <laughs> but the reason why you don't like Prophet Joshua Holmes it's because the spirit of sorcery know that prophet Joshua Holmes know things that if you receive it into your soul, you're operating the same dominion, the same blessing, the same favor, the same glory that prophet Joshua Holmes operate in. So, so the, the spirit of sorcery, its whole job is to make you mad at me and you don't even know why you're mad at me because I have something for you that's supposed to be in you and you can't receive it if you mad. You ever wondered how could you be mad at a leader that you never met before? You never sat in their presence. You never had a talk at a table with them. You never got to know them personally. How could you be mad at them? Who? Is that the spirit of the Lord making you mad at somebody that you never met before? It's, it's actually kind of a form of insanity. <laughs> I don't like you, but well, do you know who you even is? Like, cause, cause you may be something in your head that you saw about me that not even real. <laughs> so where did you, I don't like you. Well, do you know who you really is? Cause until you experience the real you, you can't determine whether you like or you don't like, you don't, Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. This not even my subject, but the Spirit of the Lord want to say this. That the Spirit of Sorcery, its job when you come to the earth is to stop you from being connected to your God connection. And so the spirit of sorcery, its job is to teach you things so that when the person that God has chosen to be a source of strength to you, wisdom, knowledge to you, comes on the scene, you won't be able to receive them. Wow. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? Oh my God, the spirit of sorcery, its job is to train you to have preferences so that when Jesus deals with your life face to face and he uses somebody like a Moses, like a David, like a Solomon, that you won't be able to receive what they say because of what is already in your system, your mind, your preference. Now, saints, I want you to see this because the Spirit of the Lord is saying this to me. The Queen of Sheba, she did not only hear good things about Solomon. I'm sure that she heard that Solomon had a cult. <laughs> because after all, we do see over a thousand women and then there's men servants that's serving underneath Solomon with great joy. So I'm sure that she heard that Solomon was a brainwasher. I'm, I'm sure that she heard that Solomon was a womanizer. I'm, heard, I'm, I'm, I'm positive that she was hearing that Solomon was a cult leader. 
She heard all those things. But see, because she's hungry for God, her hunger for God quickens her of which information to entertain. <laughs> see, because she really fears God, the fear of God directs her into which information should be heeded. Wow. Saints, you got to hear me. Because she has a relationship with God. See, she don't got a relationship with news. She not a social media prophetess. <laughs> she, she, she not a social media queen. Because she knows the voice of God. She sticks with the right information. She goes and sit at the feet of Solomon. She leaves her kingdom. And she humbles herself, though she is a leader, to be led. She comes underneath the covering of Solomon. Oh, I love this. Thank you, Father. Because, Lord, we didn't even discuss this before I got on here, but you got me. You got me in a stream of information right now, a stream of strolls, a, a stream of scrolls. And she learns everything that he says. She gets an impartation from Solomon. And she takes large money, millions of dollars. They estimated it to be over $287 million, her first seed. And sows it into King Solomon. Did you hear what I just said? Her first seed, over $287 million, they estimated and sows it into King Solomon, becomes a partner of his ministry, becomes a virtuous woman underneath his covering, becomes a follower of his teachings, and she never allows the wrong information to stop what God has for her in Solomon. She, not, she never lets the Jerusalem Times, <laughs> the Jerusalem Times, the Samaria Post, she never lets them determine whether or not she's going to heed what's coming out of Solomon for her life. Because she's a woman of the spirit. See, when you're a woman of the natural, you're subject to the natural for truth. But when you're a woman of the spirit, you stick with the spirit for accuracy. You pray in the spirit to know truth. You go to the Holy Spirit for your decision making. Wow, 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 wow. Saints, one thing that we can look one thing that we can look at about this woman, the Queen of Sheba, is that she chooses the spirit over flesh. And the voice of God over the voice of man. And she doesn't miss God because she's not a carnal woman. She's not in her feelings. She's not in her mind. She's not in her intellect or her education. I got to say it like this. She's in Christ. Now, the Bible even said that the spirit of Christ was testifying out of the prophets of old about his coming. And so the spirit of Christ has always been there. 
The reason why I said the spirit of Christ, because it's the spirit of the anointed one, meaning that this, this is the son of God operating to declare his arrival through the prophets. So the queen of Sheba chooses to be in Christ, to be in the anointed one. Oh my goodness. What we can discover about the Queen of Sheba is that she is not manipulated by the prince of the power of the air. The words of the devil have no power over her. This is why she's able to get to Solomon, receive what Solomon has for her, and what God scheduled to occur in her life does not get aborted. Because she's a woman of the spirit. Wow. She could have let sorcery stop her from getting to the source. That, if you look at the word sorcery, you hear the word source in there. Sorcery. Because the sorcery stops you from getting to the source where God wants to strengthen you. Saints, the same thing happened to the woman at the well. Do you think when she went go preach the gospel to certain people in her village, don't you know that some of them was telling her, oh, you following that Jesus? That blasphemer? Wow. You, oh, you following that deceiver? That liar? That work fake miracles? That break Sabbaths? That goes into a synagogue and whips and turns over tables. You're serving that lying man, that deceiving man. What did a woman at the well do? She just kept on going. Bye. <laughs> she just kept on going. The woman at the well didn't even stop to argue because she knew what she knew. She had an encounter with Jesus. She's a woman of the spirit. So she don't need advice on what has been made known to her. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, she don't need to hear a report when the report has come to her face to face. Because she's a woman of the spirit. When you're a woman of the spirit, the spirit controls you. The Holy Ghost is the guidance. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. This is something serious. This something serious. How many of y'all catching this? This is amazing stuff here. I know that the spirit of God want to say this because this, this wasn't, I didn't even think about this before I got in the line. Everything that I'm saying right now, as I stand in the presence of God, is nothing that I thought about before I got on the line. I'm actually flowing in a stream right now because God is selecting what he wants to be in your spirit. And I'm letting him do it. Here's what I just heard the Spirit of the Lord say. Are you aware of the agenda of the spirit of sorcery against your life? Because the spirit of sorcery, you finding out something about sorcery that you never thought about before. You're finding out that sorcery, its job is to get you away from your source. So God tells Elijah to anoint Elisha in his place. So if Elisha encounters any information that's going against what God said, which is to receive an anointing from Elijah, it's sorcery.
And so now you understand why Elisha, his first response to the sons of the prophet saying, do you know that your master shall be taken away from you? He kept getting angry. Because what he's saying is, if my master is not saying it, <laughs> which shows you that your prophet is your master. The sons of the prophet said that, do you know that your master will be taken away from you? And, and he kept getting upset. He was getting irritated because his soul was conformed to only hearing the voice of his master. So he didn't get impressed. He wasn't fascinated. He wasn't entertained. He was getting disturbed because he had became a man of the spirit. Wow. Saints, these teachings are so strong, man. They're, they're so strong. If you listen to yesterday's teaching, if you listen to what we're saying right now, the spirit of the Lord is ministering to you. The reason why Elisha is getting angry because he knows that they don't have authority to talk to him like his master. See, you're going to have to learn this in the future that even if somebody says something to you, what authority are you coming to me in? Because if you're not my master, God is not going to have me submit to your word. The only way I have permission from God to submit to your word is if my master sent you to me. Wow. Saints, here's why I just heard King Jesus say. He said, son, when I was on earth, I was the master of the lost sheep of Israel, even though they didn't receive me. So I had to give the disciples power two by two. I, the reason why I gave them power, I gave them authority because they had the authority to go on my behalf and the people would receive them as if it was me. If I didn't give them the power, There would be no leverage for the people to receive them as my spokesman. So saints, here's what the spirit of the Lord just said. That's why in Acts chapter one, verse eight, I said that you shall receive power to become what? My witnesses, Jesus witnesses. And so the reason why he's given the power it's so that when Peter speaks up and says, these men are not drunk as you suppose, the hearts of the people will be conformed to see Peter as if he was Jesus. So that they could submit to the word and know that they were still in the will of God while they submitted. So, so that he gave Peter power so that when they heard Peter talk, they could know that that's what Jesus wanted to say to them. And they could see Peter as Jesus. And then they could respond to Peter in the right spirit and still have eternal life because their fruit is increasing towards God. Now you know why King Jesus was saying, if you give a cup of cold water in my name, you're doing this unto me. I was in prison, you visited me. I was naked, you clothed me. I was hungry, you fed me. Now you know what he was talking about. These were areas where Jesus was planted in people. And that person was assigned to you. And how you responded to them was how you was responding to Jesus himself. Because his spirit had took them over. And whatever spirit rules you determines who you are. 